Okay, this is Josh T. Franco, and I am interviewing uh, Demi at her home in Miami, Florida on September 2nd, 2020 for the Archives of American Art Pandemic Oral History Project. Demi, thank you for taking time to talk to us. We want to create a record of this year and the impact on American artists. So the question, first question is, how have you been since March and how did your life change in March? Well, for me, it's a tragedy and full of chaos. So it's the second time in my life that I have experienced it. Like, you know, once in my childhood and then now, and an adult, and it's not nice at all. So I know what you're referring to, but it's interesting to hear you talk about, I know what you're talking about, but please say it for the, whoever watches this. Um, that's interesting you take it to that level of what you experienced as a child. Completely. Uh, when I was seven years old, my father was executed and I was sent away to a different country, to different people, far away from my mother and my two sisters, uh, to people that I hardly knew anything. That to me, uh, I felt the reaction that I had during that tragedy in my life was, I always felt like paralyzed while the whole world was going by me. And I felt like that until the age of 28, when I began painting, mm -hmm. which helped me out a great deal. Now it's the second tragedy. I call it the pandemic, this uh, wow. coronavirus. That means it's very significant. Is painting helping you through this tragedy? Well, now I am an adult mm -hmm. in, in, and so many, rushing feeling different feelings that I'm I can reason before when I was a child I just was paralyzed and I didn't know what was going on now because I am an adult I'm analyzing I'm thinking and I I mean can I list for you the list of all the feelings that are rushing through me absolutely but I, I should say that this is my house studio and I have been here since March 10. Why? Because uh, my immune system, I am a three times cancer survivor and I have asthma. So my life is, has been threatened by this and I have to stay home. I only go out one hour to do my exercises and then with my husband Arturo, who is also a painter, and then I come back here to so you can imagine, I have lost my freedom completely. And I'll tell you the, all the feelings rushing for the past four or six months now, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is sadness, desolation, hopeless, fear, faith, abandonment, unbearable, Grateful to God, surprise, disturb, in darkness, in light, compassion, depress, persevere, peace, despair, threaten, unrest, loneliness, and inspire. That's, I think that's a perfect <laughs> list for all the feelings <laughs> many people are feeling. Um, I, you know, the isolation and loneliness stand out to me, and I wonder, have you been able to connect with friends or people through the virtual at all? Yes, but it gets to a point where you get bored doing, and you know, so you have to find certain other things, you know, that will help you out, which I have been uh, trying to find. One is my faith in God through Jesus Christ. It's nice to have someone uh, close to you, like I feel. Like in the morning, I woke up at six o'clock in the morning. I go to the darkness of my studio. I light a candle and I talk to God and I said, I want this light to come into to my life. All I paint always, all my life is lightness, 
fighting with darkness. That's what my paintings are all about. And that's what I'm asking for now also, that this darkness will disappear and lightness will come, come back. Is the pandemic having a direct impact on what you paint, on the subjects you paint? Oh, yes. <laughs> Somehow, uh, I do not like to paint in an easel anymore. I mean, I have been painting for the past 35 years. I have painted in my easel, small, medium, large size painting, but not anymore. I decided on March 10th that what I needed was to paint large murals. Like I'm talking about from 120 inches long to 120 inches wide, which is almost the size of my studio. I needed something larger than life. Like, like, which I was confronting this thing, this coronavirus, which is larger than life. And I needed to paint and fight and struggle with this big, for the first time, hmm. a mural. I created, I'm working on it. Uh, evidently, it will take me like, uh, a year each one because I paint very slow. So I have two, one in reserve. Once I get bored with the first one, I switch to the second one, which is difficult. Uh, no, I think one wastes like 30 pounds because I have so much paint in it that has increased the, cam the canvas weight. But it makes me feel that I'm doing something with fighting something bigger than me. That's a very clear impact, the scale. Uh, what about the subject that you're painting? What are those paintings well, about? One of them is called The Big Storm, okay? It's uh, children cover, cover up with umbrellas, but there's one that uh, the umbrella became upside down. Mm. So, no covering, no protection whatsoever. And it's raining and all that. The second mural is called Brothers of Darkness and Sons of Light. And that has to do like a, with the nightmare of light and darkness. I, I'm, I'll be looking forward to seeing those one day. How much would it wait? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 50 pounds? That's well, great. <laughs> but I, again, I'm fighting against something mm -hmm. bigger than me. Yeah, the, the uh, abandonment also stood out in your list, and you don't feel abandoned by God, that's clear. Who do you feel abandoned by? Yes, I do sometimes. Oh. I believe in God mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ, but there's so much despair sometimes and so many feelings in my mind and uh, I wake up like in the morning and it, it's the same thing over and over, you know? And I feel abandoned. He has abandoned me, you know? But then through the day, I can see things. He makes me it, it go on and I feel that he makes me like look to music. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. we have here a, a collection of uh, 5,000 CDs. Mm -hmm. And I love jazz, I love uh, classical music. And there's one special that I like, it's uh, James Brown. He, you know, he's a, a kind of funky music. Mm -hmm. And he was called in his time, uh, Mr. Dynamite. And when I'm completely down and I don't want to paint or anything like that, I put James Brown in the special song, Get Up! <laughs> Get Up! <laughs> Get Up! And I began dancing and energy begins to come inside of me and I begin painting. Once I begin the painting, it's fine. I can paint forever. It's the start of the painting that is so difficult. 
I bet James Brown is getting a lot of people through this. <laughs> what? I bet James Brown is getting a lot of people through this. Oh, he, he is with me. Yeah. I dance and oh. I exercise at the same time. What are your thoughts about how uh, Miami is handling things or what are you observing in the city that you live in? Well, I guess the only thing I can judge is by me. If I'm having a difficult time, I think a normal, sensible person is having problems. How they handle, I don't. Because my life was destroyed by politics, okay? I don't touch that. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it's, I mean, I, I was completely alone in the world because of politics. So I don't want to, I know the political, um, thing is, I can see it in everywhere, television, uh, cellulars, Facebook. I had to close my Facebook because my friends will talk about it. That's all. People tend to talk about all these things. I know they are important, but I am, especially in one way, I was destroyed. So, and I built up little by little. My, per my person, you know? And twice I cannot go through that again, you mm. know? Because I'm not strong. So what I do is I rely in, in my friends, which are very sweet, very, and God, that's all I can do. Mm. And in my talent, my husband Arturo, which he's also an artist and he has such a, everlasting hunger for art. He can paint. He doesn't care about anything but paint. And he can stand in a six, 10, 12 hours. He doesn't care because it's a hunger. And I look at him and that helps me out because I said, I want that hunger for art. Mm -hmm. And art built up my, my life, helped me to understand myself. And I see that in Arturo and I become one with him. And I steal that energy from him too, besides James Brown. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. Oh, is there a particular museum or art that you are looking forward to seeing once we can, once places can open again and we can go? That is also so frustration and in despair because I have so many ideas, so many plans. My gallery, uh, so many plans. And, and now you don't know. Now the museums are beginning to open. But I must tell you something. The NSU Art Museum in Fort Lauderdale, four months ago, they did an interview with me. And Usually, you know, they take uh, the interview to the YouTube pages and people will see it, whoever is interested and click view the viewers, you will see it. Usually when I have an interview, I only have three or four or 80 people, the, the most 80 people, that's all. But I'm seeing something that also is amazing. Mm. Can you believe that I began with one? two, three, and now I am in 1,400 viewers. Amazing. Isn't that a miracle? Yeah. So that gives me such happiness because I see in my loneliness, in my darkness, I see that people are contacting me, that I am with them and they are with me. They're looking at my paintings in the interview listening to what I have to say. And who knows, they're all over the world. And every two days I go there and say, let's see who else wants to see me. <laughs> it keeps increasing. It hasn't stopped since it began. Never happened to me, never. So this is a way of feeling people that they are with me and I am with them. It's beautiful. That's great. I'm so happy. That's great. I, 
yeah, <laughs> you should have more and more. You should have all the fans in the world. I hope this interview gets more people, a lot of people. I think it probably will. We'll see. <laughs> uh, I'm curious about the paintings behind you. Okay, this is um, in January. My gallery, Toxana Salamatina, published a big, large, for the first time in my life, I have a book. And yes, I am very proud of it. And it's about my paintings. And that is the cover of the book. Mm. And it was uh, published in Milan. In, I don't remember, but it's a very famous publisher. They published the best art books in the world. Mm -hmm. And she gave me that as a gift. So that is a Botticelli's garden. It was inspired in the Botticelli painting. I think it's called the Primavera, something like that. And as usual, usually I get inspired by masters and I switch the story to my own childhood mm -hmm. story. Like here you see my three sisters when we were happy, dancing around with bubbles, balloons on top. And then you see here, like a metamorphosis going on here. A change of a child, a, a being born child, changing to like in a different kind of world, you know? Again, I transfer my, my life, which has always been an inspiration for me. I can paint a thousand paintings mm -hmm. because I never forget that. You know, it's like an open wound yeah. that never closes. But it has been like a miracle for me because otherwise I would be painting trees and landscaping. <laughs> and I don't like that. I like to touch people. Like things touches me. I, it's, it's a way of feeling alive, you know? So that's, uh, I love Botticelli and that's a homage to him. And this one here, can you see this one here? Yes. Okay. That's also a metamorphosis of a little girl changing physically and she eventually will become like a firefly insect. Mm -hmm. Like I'm hoping that one day I will be. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Full of life. Beautiful, yes. Yeah. Yes, my Are paint. I only paint children. Yeah. Even if I paint adult people, they, they look terrible. But they will look like a child, you know? I cannot paint adult people somehow. <laughs> um, another question, we're wondering how people are living differently in their homes because they're there so much now. And I know you and I think you cook quite a bit, but are you cooking, are you cooking even more? Or do you, have you had new recipes? Well, my husband is very upset with me because he has gained almost 15, 15 or 20 pounds because I cook like a crazy. I love to cook Moroccan food, Balinese food, Cuban food, Japanese food, every nationality you mentioned, I cook it. Yeah. And, and it's a way of expressing myself too because all the species, you know, all the things I put in there has a lot of colors. And besides that, it keeps me occupied when I'm not painting. Yeah, I remember my meal at your home was so great. Oh, yes. I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, last question for this interview. I've been asking artists, you know, this is a record for, for us to have for the future. So what do you think it's important in 100 years for people to know about being an artist in the U.S. in 2020? Okay. Very simple. Do not think about the future and just do your work, your paintings until your last breath of life. That's all. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording and um, I'm not going to hang up though. Just stop recording. Okay, darling. Thank you, Dami. Love you.
Love you. Thank you. Bye.